Now, today, the Labour Party has claimed tax changes have been wiped out by inflation, rejecting the Prime Minister's claims that the economy is turning a corner. Let's speak to the Shadow Business Secretary, Jonathan Reynolds, now. Uh, Jonathan, good morning to you. Well, inflation is morning. coming down, isn't it? And the Bank of England saying they're going to get close to the 2% target far sooner than had been projected. We were just hearing from Jack Elsom here that there's not much uh, to divide uh, Labour and Tory policies when it comes to the economy. How can you claim that life is going to be better for us and we're going to feel better financially under a Labour government? Yeah, good morning. Well, first of all, it is the case, unfortunately, that people are not in real terms better off and they won't be, unfortunately, at the end of this parliament. And that is because inflation, the cost of the essential things we need every week in our shopping will wipe out any of the the minor gains coming from uh, those tax cuts that were in the budget now just on the point about there being no change between labor and the conservatives on the economy i've got to you know put the other case to that i, I couldn't agree with that first of all labor's pledges around building homes was the most significant thing that, that will affect people that gets the economy going but that's a big change and requires a big bit of political commitment from labor if you look at the news this week um Terrible situation in Port Talbot where thousands of steel workers will lose their jobs despite the government spending half a billion pounds. We wouldn't do that. Our industrial strategy would have a different plan for that. That's people's work and people's homes. When it comes to things like skills, an essential part of the economy are changes to the apprenticeship levy. That's the money businesses pay that goes into apprenticeships and other forms of training. We would allow more of that money to go into that. So these are substantial differences. And they're the things that make the biggest difference. And then you add in our, our, our pledge on employment rights, so our new deal for working people, more security in the workplace, how we'll renegotiate the, those Brexit arrangements so we have a, a better trading relationship with the European Union. I would say these are all real, practical, tangible, deliverable things. And that's what people want. They, they've had a period where they've been promised, frankly, all sorts from the Conservatives and, by the way, from the SNP in Scotland. And those things haven't been delivered. So what we are focusing on are the things that will make a difference, but we can deliver to the benefit of, of individuals themselves, but the country as a whole too. Rachel Reeves uh, courting business uh, again uh, this week. Uh, Labour trying to portray itself as a pro-business party, but one of your key plans announced yesterday at rail nationalisation is causing concern for business, isn't it? Because what does it say about Labour and how much the Labour Party under Sir Keir Starmer has really changed? There's a fear that you are a wolf in sheep's clothing, that actually this policy uh, reeks of Jeremy Corbyn uh, and is... Labour going to go backwards? Well, that's a fair question, but I would say no, and I can prove that very clearly. I mean, first of all, I take great pride as a Shadow Business Secretary in businesses of all sizes in the UK, saying they look to Labour, they trust Labour much more than they do the Conservatives. That hasn't been an easy change to bring about. A lot of work has gone into that, but it reflects that work and the policies we put forward. Just on rail nationalisation, look, this is a pragmatic response to how we need to improve the railways. So look, first of all, I, I'm talking to you from my home in Staley Bridge. We're a big railway uh, place. You know, we've got a, a, the Trans Pennine Line, the Huddersfield Line runs through here. Don't forget my local services, Trans Pennine and Northern, they're already under state control, as is uh, the East Coast, as is Southwestern, because there are no companies able to run those services to the level that we expect. So you've already got four out of the, have you know, 11 uh, major companies under, under state, state control. control Jonathan. There have been improvements. Like they're not satisfactory. But, of course, what you've got is a situation where if you're going to have that degree of government control, remove the fragmentation, go for the benefits you can get from that, particularly on ticketing, the integration of services. A big thing for me as business secretary is how can we have a, an industry that develops and builds in the UK the rail rolling stock that we need. We've got 75 different trains in operation on the UK railways. And the way we do it under privatisation, that they're leased by companies that then leased back to other private companies. It's very hard to cascade stock between lines and do it in the right way. So I think at the minute, under the Conservatives, we've got the worst of all worlds. We haven't really got a, a private system focused on what people need. And we haven't either got the kind of control, the, the ability to make those changes as a government that you get under a nationalised system. So this is a pragmatic way to improve the railways. And obviously, doing it this way, you can take out significant cost because you've got okay. that integration okay. of the service. So there's nothing to worry about. We're, we're neither wolves nor sheep. And we are a party that's focused on what business needs, pro-business, 
pro worker team. So taking out significant costs, what does that mean for the passenger? Because if you're going to improve the railways, the number one and two uh, things that passengers will tell you is, I want cheaper fares and I want my trains to run on time. Uh, under nationalisation, the buck stops with you, doesn't it? So can you guarantee cheaper fares and can you guarantee fewer delays? Well, first of all, you can guarantee things like the best price for your ticket. So where you've got, if you think about the London transport system, people will know you use a cash card, your debit card, you scan in and out. And because that's under an integrated system, they can guarantee a maximum fare that you will pay. So you've got the option for things like that. Automatic um, refunds when you are delayed on a service rather than the applications that you make at the minute. Of course, for an area like mine, what we fundamentally need is, is the investment in the infrastructure. That's what causes a lot of problems here in Staley Bridge. It's, it's before the trains even get to the area, they're often delayed on the infrastructure. That means the investment in things like the transparent upgrade, which we do support. So I, I do believe it's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to be a magic one. People don't expect that. But where the British railways are at, a move to an integrated publicly controlled system is a genuinely better pragmatic way forward. And of course, many of the people uh, like the Williams Review, the government themselves have issued experts to go and look away, go away and look at the railways. They have backed Labour's plans because of the detail in them and because they are, as I say, that pragmatic response to a real problem. Of course, a massive impact on the economy as well of, of, of delayed services. So there's a very strong pro-business argument too for sorting this out. Uh, OK, Jonathan, thank you. But before we let you go, just one quick question for you. Uh, do you know the difference between Congo and Rwanda? <laughs> you know, when you're a politician and you're on question time, at the end of the week, you're thinking, I'm a little bit tired, don't want to mess this up. And then sometimes you see colleagues on and you think, goodness me, Rather I'm pleased me. that wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> I think even Chris Philp will find that one quite hard to live down. <laughs> and West Streeting will be living up to that uh, gift for the rest of his career, I think, as well. Uh, Jonathan Reynolds, Shadow Business Secretary, thank you very much indeed.